Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger, one of the ten, isn't waiting to be targeted. Instead, he's going on offense. He's releasing a video today kicking off what he's calling Country First, his effort to return the party to its traditional conservative principles. Republicans must say enough is enough. It's time to unplug the outrage machine, reject the politics of personality, and cast aside the conspiracy theories and the rage. And Congressman Kinzinger joins me now. Congressman, welcome back to Meet the Press. Um, you know, when we originally booked you, you weren't going to be alone uh, in this segment. It, you were going to be joined by a, a couple of other folks who also voted to impeach on the Republican side of the aisle. Uh, explain how hard this is uh, to do, to be as public-facing as you are. You, you've been taking arrows a little bit longer than the rest, so I think you're, you've got a thicker thicker armor these days. But explain this difficulty uh, that some of your colleagues are in. Look, it's really difficult. I mean, uh, all of a sudden, imagine everybody that supported you, or so it seems that way, your friends, your family, uh, has turned against you. They think you're selling out. I mean, I've gotten a letter, a certified letter, twice from the same people disowning me and claiming I'm possessed by the devil. Uh, but the reality is this. This is a time to choose. It's a time to choose what we're going to be in. And, and my goal in launching countryfirst.com with the number one is just to say, look, let's take a look at the last four years, how, how far we have come in a bad way, how backwards looking we are, how, how much we peddle darkness and division. And that's not the party I ever signed up for. And I think most Republicans didn't sign up for that. So you know what? Quite Yes, it's a tough position to be in, but it's really invigorating to remember what you're standing for and to talk about putting the country over party. Uh, this is going to be a lonely effort for a while, I, I imagine. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's some folks that are wondering, is it, is the re a Republican Party that's tied to Donald Trump, can that party survive? So I think that's the question. And, uh, you know, I was disappointed over the last few weeks to see what seemed like the Republican Party waking up and then kind of falling asleep again and saying, well, you know, what matters is if we can win in two years and we don't want to tick off the base. Look, People are looking for leaders to lead. We haven't led. All we're doing is saying, what does it take to get reelected? It's January of a new term. And I think we have to remind people again that, look, you know, the kid that was born in the inner city should have the same opportunity as a kid uh, born in the richest suburb. That's what we're standing for. And uh, this is an opportunity for folks to join that believe, you know, putting the country over party. I want to put up a photo here that was, to me, incredibly striking this week. It's the photo of Kevin McCarthy, the House Republican leader, with the former president at Mar-a-Lago. And what was amazing to me, Congressman Kinzinger, was it was the former president who wanted to rush that photo out. You know, here he was in this incredible moment of weakness. Nobody was interested in, he was worried nobody wanted to be with him. And here's Kevin McCarthy going, no, 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 we want to be with you. And he rushed it out. I, I, is, is it now sort of re, self-reinforcing? The party has now retied itself to Donald Trump? You know, I think your point about that picture is important. So it shows that the former president is desperate to continue to look like he's leading the party. And the problem is, until we push back and say, you know, this is not a Trump first party. This is a country first party. In some cases, you may support Donald Trump in that effort. But in my case, I believe that, that that's a whole new movement. Until we all kind of stand up and say that, we're going to be kind of chasing our tail here in this situation. And that's why I launched countryfirst.com. It's a landing place for people to go to. And uh, we'll see how it develops. But there's a lot of folks out there, Chuck, that have texted me, called me, right. written everything that say, Thank you for saying something, because nobody else has been. We've seen that there is already, I brought up the movements about censure. Um, we saw it in South Carolina uh, to Congressman Rice. I know that the Illinois Republican Party apparently is preparing to do it to you. Um, the irony of the Republican Party participating in cancel culture. I'm curious, I mean, is there just no room for disagreement in the Republican Party when it comes to Donald Trump? I mean, this is, to me, a form of cancel culture, is it not? It is, totally. I mean, if you look at Matt Gaetz going to, to Wyoming, because what, a, a tough woman has an independent view, and he doesn't want to have to go out and explain why he didn't vote for impeachment, that's totally GOP cancel culture. And what we're standing for, and I think what, frankly, a significant part of the base wants, is to say, 
look, we can have a diversity of opinion. Peter Meyer from Michigan, good friend of mine. He and I are on other ends of the spectrum on <laughs> things like foreign policy, but I respect his view on that. That's what the Republican Party needs to be, the optimistic party in the future. And we need to quit being the party that even IOTA defends an insurrection, a dead police officer, and other dead Americans on the Capitol. There is no equivalency to that, and we have to run from that as fast as we can. I want to ask you about something that uh, Democratic Congressman Dan Kildee said to Politico this week, uh, Congressman Kinzinger. He said this, I have a hard time interacting with those members right now, especially with those I had a closer relationship with. I'm not going to deny the reality that I look at them differently now. They're smaller people to me now. Um, you have a lot of Democrats who are basically saying, look, I'm not working across the aisle right now when you've got this party that's defending the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world or, or, or somehow wanting to have amnesia about January 6th. And yet we're going to be talking about, oh, the lecturing of the Democrats. Are they not being bipartisan enough? Do you blame them? Yeah, I mean, that's the point, is I think the Republican Party has lost its moral authority in a lot of areas. I mean, it doesn't mean we don't need to fight back, you know, to, to defend what we believe, conservative principles. But when I ask people now, what is a conservative principle? How many people think that conservative principles are things like just build the wall and, you know, charge the Capitol and have an insurrection? That's what Country First with the One's all about, is just going back to saying, here's what conservative principles are. And I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, I will sit here and defend conservative principles, but it's hard to have seen an insurrection three weeks ago to say that's no big deal yeah. and then to lecture Democrats on something. We've lost our moral authority, and we need to regain it as a party. Uh, if you had the opportunity to, uh, of a vote to evict uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene from Congress, would you vote to evict her? Oh, I'd, I'd certainly vote her off committee in terms of eviction. I'm not sure because kind of in the middle. I think a, a district has every right to put who they want there, mm -hmm. but we have every right to take a stand and say you don't get a committee, and uh, we definitely need to do that. And uh, if you could talk to a Senate Republican right now who thinks former President Trump's behavior was terrible, if he were in office, they might vote to convict, but they don't now, what would be your case to that group of those groups of senators who are open to punishment but right now want to talk themselves out of it with a process argument. Yeah, see, that's the thing is everybody that votes and uses process, I get it. It gives you a free way out. But this is a red line in American history. And 10 of us, I wish it was more, but 10 of us in the House took the tough vote because we know history is going to ring with what happened and record that. What we can't say, Chuck, is in the last two months of a president, you can do whatever you want, including incite a mob to insurrection. Uh, because it's just too late in the process to convict you. I think it is important to convict, to send a message, and to say that people like Donald Trump can never hold that office again and reestablish from a Republican perspective an optimistic, hopeful future that, quite honestly, has been missing in the dialogue for a number of years. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, uh, a Republican from Illinois, uh, represents areas that are fond uh, to my family, including Bloomington and Morris. Congressman, thanks for coming on and sharing your views with us. You bet. See you.